हॅलो एव्हरी वन आय एम गीतांजली तुकाराम गडाख आय एम द फायनल इयर स्टुडंट ऑफ कम्प्युटर इंजिनिअरिंग ॲट बी व्ही सी ओ ई डब्ल्यू आय एम मेकिंग दिस व्हिडिओ टू डेमॉन्स्ट्रेट द प्रोजेक्ट लोन प्रडिक्शन सिस्टीम विच इज युज मेक मेक युजिंग मशीन लर्निंग सो लेट स्टार्ट फॉर द फर्स्ट इयर स्टुडंट हू डोंट नो अबाउट कम्प्युटर लेट स्टार्ट विथ सॉफ्टवेअर सिस्टीम व्हॉट इज सॉफ्टवेअर सिस्टीम सॉफ्टवेअर सिस्टीम कन्सिस्ट ऑफ टू मेन पार्ट्स फ्रंट एंड अँड बॅक एंड What is front end? Front end is a part of a website users can see and interact with such as graphical user interface command line including design navigating menus text images video front end it is the part which we can see and which we interact with when we open any website we see the gui of the website and we interact with that website so this is the front end which contain many text images button menus etc front front end languages are html css javascript and many more Let's see backend. Backend technologies include programming languages, databases, communication mechanisms or frameworks that make a building block of web applications backend. So backend we can't see the backend. Backend contain programming languages, databases. So backend languages are Java, Python, C++ and databases like SQL and MongoDB. As I am making the project loan prediction system using machine learning, let's understand what is the machine learning. Machine learning is a growing technology which enables computer to learn automatically from the past data. Machine learning uses various algorithms for building mathematical models and making prediction using historical data and information. So machine learning is learning of machine on its own from the past data. We use various machine learning algorithms for training the model and we predict the output by using historical data by training training data. There are two types of machine learning supervised learning and unsupervised learning in supervised learning we train the model with label data in unsupervised learning we train the model with unlabeled data let's see supervised and unsupervised learning supervised learning is a type of machine learning method in which we provide label data to the machine learning system in order to train it and on that basis it predicts the output in supervised learning we give the label data to the machine let's consider the example suppose we want to we have given one uh, picture and we we want to uh, analyze that whether it is cat or dog so in supervised learning we will provided with multiple pictures of cat and dog with label that this is cat this is dog so based on this label data we train the model and we predict the output for the given image whether it is of cat or dog there are types of supervised learning classification and regression in classification we classify the data into two or more classes in regression we find out the relationship between dependent and independent variable unlike supervised learning in unsupervised learning we are provided with unlabeled data that means this is dog this is cat it is not provided only pictures of cat and dog are provided and on that pictures we train the model and we predict the output in unsupervised learning the machine learning model itself find patterns on its own there are two types of unsupervised learning clustering and association in clustering we cluster we form the clusters we group similar data object into one cluster so uh, by grouping similar objects into one cluster we form many clusters uh, association is second type of unsupervised learning in association we find the association or relationship between large set of data items so what is the problem statement in loan prediction system we have to find whether the person is eligible to approve the loan or not using various parameters related to that person so what is the procedure we follow uh, this is the uh, common procedure that we follow in making any machine learning project first of all import the required libraries and data set data selection data pre processing selection of machine learning algorithms splitting data into training and testing train the model using training data save the model deploy the model firstly we import the required libraries and data set data set is most important part of machine learning project later we select the data later we uh, pre process the data that means finding the missing value filling the missing value filling the outliers uh, finding the and removing the noise 
Later we select the machine learning algorithm. Later we split the data into training and testing. Training data is used to train the model and testing data is used to test the model whether the prediction of the model is correct or not. Later we train the model using training data, we save the model and we deploy the model. In a loan prediction system, I have used the algorithm as follows logistic regression, decision tree, random forest classifier. Let us see it by one by one. Logistic regression. Logistic regression is one of the most popular machine learning algorithm which comes under supervised learning algorithm. It is used for predicting the categorical dependent variable using the set of independent variables. Logistic regression is supervised machine learning algorithm in which label data is given and we predict the categorical dependent variable using the set of independent variables. Decision tree. It is a tree structured classifier where internal node represent the features of data set, branches represent decision rules and each leaf node represent the outcome. So in decision tree, we, let's visualize the tree structure. In tree, we are having internal nodes, we are having branches, we are having leaf node. So in tree structure classifier, the internal node represent the features of data set, branches represent the decision rules and leaf node represent the outcome in decision tree. Random forest classifier is a classifier that contains number of decision tree on various subsets of a given data set and take the average to improve the predictive accuracy of the data set. In random forest classifier, we split the data set into various subsets of a data set and decision tree is formed for each subset of a data set and later we take the average of subsets of a data set to uh, improve the accuracy. So this was the theoretical part. Let's see the project. This is the Visual Studio code. I have made the project in Visual Studio code. So this is the loan prediction system. Our project, the, it contains various files such as app.py, it is a Python file, loan prediction.ipynb, it is the Jupyter notebook file in which we have written the machine learning code. This is the main file, model.pickle, it is the pickle file to save the model. Uh, there are uh, data sets are given test data set and training data set. Let's first see uh, the test and train data set. So, uh, let's uh, first see the test data set or train data set. Let's first see the train data set. In trained data set, we are having the columns such as loan ID, gender, married, dependent, education, self-employed, applicant income, co-applicant income, loan amount, loan amount term, credit history, property and loan status. These are the columns in the our training data set. Training data set is used to train the model. This is the loan status. It is the target variable which we want to predict. Loan status is given in training data set only. In testing data set, there is no any loan status. We have to predict the loan status in testing data set. So, these are the columns. Uh, loan ID is given, gender is given, male, female, married is given, yes, no, dependent. On how many percent it is dependent, 0, 1, 2 or 3 plus education, graduate, non-graduate and all. This is the training data set in which loan status column is not present. We have to predict the loan status column in the training data set. <coughs> Let's see the project now. So I have made the project in Visual Studio Code. <coughs> One minute, okay. So as we have seen, this is the first step importing the libraries. We have imported pandas as pd, import numpy as mp, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, percent matplotlib inline. Pandas is used for data manipulation and analysis. Numpal, numpy library is used for numerical operations. Matplotlib li library is used for visualization for plotting graphs. Percent matplotlib inline is used to have output uh, of graph in same window, not in different window. So first of all, by using pandas, we have read the data set train.csv, uh, read, uh, uh, read underscore csv is used for reading the data set. By using df.head, we have print the first five rows of the data set that is loan ID, gender, married, dependent, education, self-employed and all. 
by using df dot tell we have displayed the last five rows of the data set. df dot shape is used for number of columns and number of rows. Here number of uh, rows are six one four and number of columns are thirteen. df dot info is used for information of columns such as column number null or non null and data type of the column. Data types are float, integer, and object. Object is considered as string. df dot is null dot sum. Is null is the function uh, which find the null values and sum. We are summing up the null values. So we can see that gender, married, dependent, self-employed, loan amount, loan amount term, credit history have the null values, and we have, we can see the sum of null values too. How many null values are present? Df dot describe is used to describe each columns like count, mean of column, standard deviation of column, mean, twenty five percent, fifty percent, seventy five percent, max. We can see the individual column. Using df in bracket column name, we can see the applicant income here. We can see two columns also applicant income and loan amount. So df dot column will give all the columns in the data set. Now let's do pre processing data pre processing. Df dot is null dot sum. We are summing up the null values. Df dot info information of the columns. So the missing values are. Uh, categorized into two parts: numerical missing values and categorical missing values. First of all, we have to handle numerical missing values. Numerical missing values are loan amount, loan amount term, and credit history. We are replacing that with mean of uh, respective column. We are replacing the numerical missing value with mean of uh, respective column by using fill now function. Again, we are displaying the is null sum of uh, null values, so we can see that the column loan amount, loan amount term, and credit history have zero so null values because null values are filled with mean values. Now we have to handle categorical missing values. In categorical missing value, we can't calculate the mean. We uh, we can use mode here. Mode is the most repeatedly occurring value, so we are replacing the Uh, missing values, categorical missing values such as gender, married, dependent, self-employed, using the mode of respective column. The value which is occurring repeatedly, it is the mode, and we are replacing with that using the fill now function. Now we are again uh, taking the sum of null values, and we can see that all the null values are filled. Now exploratory data analysis. This is the next step. Uh, for this, we are using Seaborn library. <coughs> Import Seaborn as SNS. Seaborn is a library which is used for data visualization and exploratory data analysis. Using Seaborn, we are uh, plotting the count plot. Count plot is used to count the number of uh, values. We are using count. Uh, we are plotting the count plot for gender. So we can see that male are. Larger than female, the count of male is up to five hundred percent approx, and count of female is hundred. Again, we are plotting count plot for dependent. There are four categories: zero, one, two, three plus, and we are seeing the count of each category. Married again, we have plotted the count plot. Uh, married are more than non-married. The up dot column we display the columns. Again, uh, now we are plotting the distribution plot using Seaborn. Distribution plot will uh, show the distribution of the column. We are plotting distribution plot for co-applicant income. We can see that it is not normally distributed; it is right skewed. Again, we can plotting this plot for loan amount. Again, we can see that it is not normally distributed; it is somewhat right skewed. We are plot the distribution plot. Now. we have we are going to create a new column by combining two columns applicant income and co applicant income are combined to form a new column that is total income so uh, in df dot head we can see that now total income column has been created at the last as we have seen when we plot the distribution plot for integer columns we can see that this is not normally distributed so to make it normally distributed we take the log of respective columns so we have taken the log of applicant income and we have stored it it, it into applicant income log so now we can see that it is normally distributed uh, same for all the columns co applicant income 
same for loan loan amount it is a log we have taken of loan amount and it is now normally distributed so in head we can see that these are the columns now as we have taken the log of columns such as applicant income co applicant income loan amount we are dropping this columns so we can see that this applicant income log loan uh, loan amount log loan amount term log these are all the logarithmic values so we are taking this logarithmic uh, values to continue by using value dot count function we can count the values so loan status dot value count will count the years values and no values years values are 422 no values are 192 df dot info will give the information again df dot education dot value counts will count the values for education graduate are 480 non graduate are 134 handling categorical data so categorical uh, columns such as gender married dependent education self employed property area uh, we are uh, dropping the first value of these columns and we are taking only one value and based that only one value we are giving the uh, values as 1 or 0 we are concatenating that value let's see uh, what happen exactly so first in the gender column we are having male and female so we are dropping the first value as female and we are taking only male into consideration so we can here see that only male we have taken into consideration so if the value is male it it can represent uh, it will give 1 and if the value is female it will give 0 again for married two values are there yes or no we are have dropped the first value no and we have taken yes value into consideration if the married is yes the value will be 1 and if married is no value will be 0 again uh, whatever we have done on training data set we have drawn uh, same on testing data set we have read the test data set we have filled the numerical missing value with the mean we have filled the categorical missing value with the mode we have combined two columns applicant income and co applicant income into one column that is total income as we have plot the distribution plot as distribution plot don't have normal distribution we have taken the log of applicant income co applicant income loan amount loan amount term total income we have dropped the simple columns and we have taken the logarithmic columns again uh, for handling the categorical values we are filling it with the <coughs> sorry for categorical values we are dropping the first value and we are taking the second value into consideration and we are given zeros and one values for uh, with respect to that uh, second selected value and we have concatenated it now the step is of splitting the data set x is a independent uh, variable so we are uh, removing the loan status from it and loan status we are giving to y y is a dependent variable or target variable so we can see x and y <coughs> so uh, now we have to split the data set into training and testing data set for that we are using from sklearn dot model selection import train test split and we have split the data set here testing data set is of size 25% and training data set is of size 75% random state is a uh, value if you give same random state that is 42 you will give you will uh, the same accuracy you will get as of mine so i have taken first uh, uh, algorithm that is random forest classifier from sklearn dot ensemble i have imported random forest classifier classifier and i have trained the random forest classifier the accuracy of random random forest classifier is about 80% again i have taken decision tree classifier i have fit using training uh, data set and accuracy of decision tree classifier is 70% again i have taken logistic regression 
trained the logistic regression and accuracy is 77 percent so from this uh, we can see that the accuracy of uh, random forest classifier is more that is 80 percent so we have selected random forest classifier now we are uh, drawing the confusion matrix so here we can see that these are the true positive value these are the true negative value these are the false positive value and these are the false negative value true positive values are 98 false positive values are 24 false sorry true positive values are 98 true negative values are 24 false positive values are 30 and false negative values are 2 and lastly by using pickle we save the model So let's run the loan prediction system project now. For running loan prediction system project, go on app.py file. On the right hand side corner, there is run button. Click on that. So it is running now. It will take some time. Now go on, uh, click on follow link. This will run the project. Let's click on prediction and give the values. So gender, male, married status, no, dependent, let's give it to zero. Education, graduate, self-employed, yes, credit history, zero, or we can give it as one. Property area, urban. We can give any values. Co-applicant income. Enter loan amount now that we want to take and loan term. Now let's click on credit. So loan status, status is yes. This is how we can run our system. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you.